Now we'll get into the next component of the defined phase, which is called the milestone. Milestones are the reference point marking major events in a project. It is a high level project plan with the dates. It typically dates of completing the DMAIC phase. So before the uh, beginning of this uh, defined phase, I talked about that there is a DMAC methodology that we are going to talk about. So in the milestone, we should mention the start and the end date of each and every phases here uh, in the milestones. Uh, it should be aggressive, but realistic. Okay. So that is the milestone in the defined phase of the charter. Now let's get into the army model. So as you all know that there is a tool which is, which is used in the defined phase. So the army model that we're going to talk about. So army model is also one of the important, uh, change acceleration program tools, which is very, very important uh, to be part of any six sigma project. Wherein the army is an abbreviation with, uh, which wherein A stand for approver, R stand for resource, M stand for member, and I stand for interested. It's a tool which is used by the project leaders to identify the stakeholders, to identify the project team members, okay? So wherein A stand for approver or appro approval, the person who is going to give us an approval, uh, which is required for running a project successfully. Resource, resource is a part of the project team member, one whose expertise and skills may be needed on an ad hoc basis. Okay, he's not a full time resource, but he's the one who re who's required at some point in time. So, for example, people from IT technology, they're not used, utilized at each and every point in time. They utilize only and only during the uh, improved phase of the six sigma. The next is member, the member of the team with the authorities and the boundaries of the charter. The person who is from different different cross function teams, uh, who are who are responsible to support the project team, the project leader to ensure that uh, the problem is captured properly and it is solved. So he's a person who is who is remain in the project from defined till the control and interested party who will need to be keep informed in the project. So for example, uh, the CEO of the organization or the CEO of the organization who is not the approved because he has already assigned a responsibility one level below for him to take certain, give certain approvals. And the CEO is, is at the top, we would just need to be keep informed. Anything which cannot be done by the approver, then in that case, the interested party comes into it. Now we're going to talk about the process method. It is one of the important tools which is part of the defined phase that which needs to be there. What is process mapping? Sequence of activities arranged in order of the occurrence. That is called the process mapping. What are the benefits of process mapping? Process mapping can reveal unnecessary and complex step in a process. This makes it possible to simplify and troubleshoot. It can compare actual processes against the item. Okay. These are some of the shapes of a typical process map that you can see. Now I am just going to share a snapshot of how the army tool looks like. Okay, so you see that it is mentioned here. What is the abbreviation of army which we just talked about? And these are the key stakeholders during the projects. We have the project sponsor, we have the project champion, we have the project leader the team member, which is the cross function team and the quality mentor. And as you can see that army is being captured from defined till control. Okay. It clearly talks about that which particular member of the team, a stakeholder of the team is being utilized at which point in time. So you see that uh, the, the quality mentor is a resource okay, because he or she is the person who helps the team to help with the analysis, the different tools and techniques for to complete the analysis. Okay. Team members are being there everywhere. Okay. And you see the project sponsor, uh, who is just an interested, interested party. Let's talk about who is the project sponsor and who the project champion is understanding detail. Okay. Project sponsor is the person who's at the top, who's giving instructions and who's scorecard or uh, or gold sheet is getting impacted because of a particular metric not be prop not uh, performing at a, at a certain level 
project champion is the person who is the head of the department, like the marketing department or the HR department or the finance department or the operations head. They are the ones who is responsible to remove the roadblock during the project journey. And they also participate in all the project reviews wherein they give their directions, they give their recommendation inputs to ensure that the project moves at a steady pace uh, with better results. Project leader is the one who's responsible for each and everything for taking certain approvals, for aligning the team, to ensure that the reviews are happening, the meetings are being conducted, uh, the discussions are happening to ensure that everybody working at the same time and to ensure that we meet the business goals also. Next is the team members or the cross-function team. Team members and cross-function team are from different, different departments because when we do a Six Sigma project, we're not only limited to one certain team or department. There are multiple departments which are involved who help to achieve a desired result. So they are the ones who is responsible to do uh, data collection was responsible to come up with this improvement solution was responsible to come up with what are the different constraints, challenges, walkthroughs in the respective respective process. So then there's a quality mentor, which I just talked about. He or she is a person who helps the team to complete the analysis, who helps the team to come up with the solutions, who ensure, who validates that the tools and techniques which are used to capture the solutions, the uh, causes uh, are done in a proper way and there is also a chain management which is, which plays a very very important role that is something which also being driven by the quality management. Uh, now we are going into the process mapping which we just covered okay uh, this is a typically story what really happens is this is what you think it is it is being okay you can see a, a process like this okay what it really is so this is what I think because I haven't documented any process map. When I start documented, okay, this is a typically it is what it should be because it's it's a very simple process now with simple steps. It is not complex, and what it could there is still an opportunity that wherein we can reduce the process step, eliminate the unnecessary step, and make it a very simple short process to ensure that the people the processes. Are, are worked in a proper way in a more structured opportunity way okay now we're going to talk about certain topics within the process mapping which is called va versus bva and versus nva what is va we stand for value added work any activity that adds value from a customer perspective is done right the first time and transform the data or information is the value added work. Okay, business value added. Any activity that adds no value from a customer perspective, but is required to operate the business based on the current business setup operating model. For example, when we conduct any refresher trainings, when we conduct any workshops, when we conduct any motivational sessions, when we conduct any leadership forum, any reviews happening, this is not a value added. Neither it's a non-value added. It's a business value. Value added is something which is only from a customer perspective, which is wherein the customer time and value is being captured. So, so for example, do it, uh, while doing production, while working on the customer services, while talking to the customer, while working on the customer request, all that is value added. Anything which is done at the back end, that's not a value added for the customer. Although it's a business value added because it is required. Now, what is non-value added? Any activity does not add value from customers and business perspective. Neither it's a value added nor it's a business value added. That's called non-value added. So if you look in this pie, the majority of the stuff, which is 50% of the stuff, is a non-value. This is typically in in most of the processes. So if we talk about the industry, if I look at any process, I would see that there are 50% non-value added opportunity. Non-value added opportunities could be a lot of handoffs, a lot of waiting time, a lot of inventories, a lot of defects, a lot of overproduction, overprocessing, et cetera, et cetera. And that is something which needs to be moved. It's only 25% approximately, which is value added, which has been utilized. 
and there is 50% which is so 50% is a non value added okay 10% is the or maybe 20% is the value added okay and 30% is a business value added we, we should always strive for improving the non value added one what is the goal as I told about? Eliminate waste and the right size amount of time required for business value added stuff. So we should always focus on improving the non-value added. You know, there's an important tool which is called the SIPOC. Okay. Uh, this is something which is a very, very important tool of a defined phase, which is it's an again an abbreviation, wherein uh, it's the S stand for supplier, I stand for in input p stand for process o stand for output and c stand for customer okay cypop could also be referred as popis because if i just reverse the order c o t i c okay so i can say customer output process input and supply let's understand what is cypop when you're planning to start a six sigma project it is very very important that you get the high level overview understanding of the scope of the process. It helps in making sure that each and every one, whosoever is involved in the project, has the same understanding of the project. So in a typical project, when we when we introduce a lot of cross-function team members to resolve a problem, because their value chain is also impacted in that particular process. And therefore, each and every person is not very sure about that what is a high level flow of the process. So CYPOG is being prepared to identify the high level scope of the process for that each and every person in the project along with the stakeholder is on the same. It gives a helicopter view of the process to the stakeholder. Okay. Therefore, it is very, very important to include maximum of five to six steps in a process. Even though your process is very complex, there are different, different scenario situation comes in place it is only and only five and six six steps which you should always include in the cycle or the copies also okay so uh let's understand the rules and responsibilities of the cycle so customer whoever receives the output of your process it can be internal and external Output, the material or data that result from the operation of a process, we all know what is output. Process, which is the high level process, the activities you must perform to satisfy your customer requirement. Input, the material or data that a process does something to do or with. And supplier, whomever provides the input to your process. This is a typically a project charter sample and which you can look at from left to the right okay we have already covered all of them uh, except the project scope okay which we will just cover now business case we talked about just to reiterate three questions that you need to keep in mind while designing a business case first question what is the background of the process what is the background of the process just in two or three lines second question is what is the need of doing this project Third question is, what are the consequences of not doing this project now? Okay. Goal statement, we already talked about. It should have a smart approach, wherein S stand for specific, M stand for measurable, A stand for attainable, R stand for realistic or relevant, and T stand for time. Opportunity statement or problem statement should have four W1H and we have segregated into impact of the pain and the business impact. Although you can you can make it as 4W1H or you can define it as a verbiage also. Okay. Uh, this is a milestone that we talked about, project plan. Okay. When we should mention the start and the end date of define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Typically, the defined phase of the Six Sigma uh, should be for two weeks. Measure would be for Two weeks at least analyze should be for two to three weeks improve should be for uh, four to six weeks depending upon the improvement solution that you're coming up with and control should be for at least two months okay that's how we should define the start and the end date of the signal 
project scope, which we did not cover, which I'm covering here, uh, what is the in scope and what is the out scope? Which means what are the team department zones which we are considering for this project? So, for example, if I'm doing a project at uh, at a state level, okay, if I'm doing a state level only, which means that there are only five or six states or cities or zones which are going to impact. So, I will mention those things as in scope. And outer scopes are the zones or teams or uh, department which are not part of this. So it is very, very clearly, uh, it is very, very important to clearly document that what is the in scope of the project and what is the outer scope. So basically it is something, what are the things that departments, teams that we are going to include and which we are not going to include. So that tomorrow at the end of the day, we say that it's not done at a global level. It is done for a particular geographical boundaries for different different departments okay project team which we just talked about you remember we talked about army uh so sponsor uh it's a person who's head the champion who is responsible for removing the roadblocks uh during the project journey uh the master black belt uh, which is mbb who is uh the quality uh, one level above the quality who is responsible for reviewing whether the quality tools and technique which are being performed by the quality mentor are done in a proper way or not then you know who's a project leader who's responsible for each and everything then the quality mentor is the one who, who is responsible for applying different tools and techniques and there are different cross-functional team members who is going to participate in the project journey altogether okay so so this is something which should be presented to the stakeholder uh, in the defined phase okay so in the defined phase as we just when we just begin we talked about certain things there are three things four things that which are very very important first it should have a proper project charter you can see the template you can use this template to draw a project charter second you should have the roles and responsibility of each and every team member which you can use as an army third is the process map which clearly articulates what is the value added what is the non-value added what is the uh, business value added and then there is a cipher which is the high level process map which clearly articulates that what is that high level step of a process wherein the s stand for supplier I stand for input, P stand for process, O stand for output, and S stand for, uh, and C stand for customer, okay? So we have completed successfully the defined phase of the Six Sigma, and now we are going to go ahead with the major phase of the Six Sigma.